Hi everyone. My name is Angela Gulick and I work for the Writing Lab here at Parkland College. The goal of this workshop is to show you how to create individual entries for a references list using the APA system of documentation. This workshop is going to focus on websites and electronic postings. What you're looking at right now is a table that I put together that has sample templates for a lot of different kinds of resources. This workshop, though, is focused on websites and other electronic postings, so we're going to stick with those. To use this, you simply click on a link and it takes you to a page that has information on it. And if you want to come back to the table, you just click the little blue home button. We're going to go, these, go through these step by step, but you're going to see some patterns that emerge. Here's a list of details that you need to provide when you document a website article. First, you always look for author information. One author, several authors. Sometimes an author can even be a group, like a government agency or a school. Next, you want to look for the most specific date information you can find. If you can't find any date at all, you're going to use the letters ND, which stand for no date, and then you're immediately going to provide the date you found the article. Next, you'll provide information about the title of the article using something called sentence capitalization, and I'll talk about that in a bit the title of the website italicized, and finally, retrieved from, and you'll provide the web address. If you're not sure how to find some of these details on a typical website, you might want to click this link right here and check out this video. Sometimes, to be very honest with you, it can be quite tricky to find all this stuff. Okay, we're going to begin a website article with one specifically named author. The way this works is I give you kind of a general template and then I give you examples. So we begin with our author information, last name, first initial, middle initial. We put the date in parentheses. We provide the title of the article followed by the title of the website italicized and then retrieved from the web address. Note there's no period at the end of any of these website article citations. So here we have an article by D.L. McKay or McKay, McKay, McKay. It was published on January 12, 2004, but note the order of that date, year, comma, month, date. We have the article title. Sentence capitalization simply means you would only capitalize the words as if it were a sentence, so you would capitalize the first word. If there are any proper nouns in the title, words you would capitalize anyway, such as United States or March or Elton John, <laughs> you would capitalize those. The name of the website is italicized and retrieved from, and this is simply the web address. In this case, it's the exact same format. We're just putting in the name of a group author as opposed to an individually named person. If you have a website with two to six authors, you will list all those authors in the exact same order they appeared on the website. So here again, we have our template, and the only thing that's going to change for these next couple of slides is going to be this author information. So here we have an article written by Phillips, Hill, and Collins. It was written on January 2, 2008. The article title was High Cholesterol Levels in Teens from the website Net Doctor, and it was retrieved from this web address. What happens when you have a website article written by even more than seven people or six people? You provide the first six names that are listed as they were listed on the original. So that's what you're looking at right here. You put three periods and then you put the last name that was listed on the article. The rest of our details are the same. Date, article, website, web address. So here we have an article written by, written by excuse me, Bachman, Wolf, Lynn, Nofel, Cobb, and Belonger. And then the last author, there might have been three, four, five, six more authors here, but the last author listed was this Jacobson. We have our date written, year, month, day. Here's an example of an article where we capitalize the first letter, but the word Alzheimer's would normally be capitalized, so we go ahead and capitalize that as well. We have the name of our website and the address from which it was retrieved. If you have a website article with no named author at all, you just skip the author and you start with the title. So down here we have the article, Clothes Make the Man or Woman. We put the date right behind the article. Remember, normally we would put the date right after the author. We have the name of the website and the web address from which it was retrieved. 
Now I want to talk about a few specialty situations when it comes to documenting sources. These are electronic postings. The first we're going to talk about is a blog. And again, you're going to see a similarity here. We're going to begin with the name of the blog's author, followed immediately by the date. We're going to provide the article title. And we're literally going to write the words web log message and put them in brackets. And then we provide the web address of the blog. For a podcast, same pattern. We begin with author, date. We provide the name, we put the words audio podcast in brackets, and we provide the web address. It's same order of information, author, date, the title of the particular posting using that sentence capitalization. Lorelei and Rory are actually people's names, so they're capitalized. You put in brackets electronic mailing list message, and finally provide the web address. Okay, this one's a little tricky. As Kindle and Nook and all of these electronic books, ebooks, become more popular, um, we are finding more situations where people are citing from an electronic book as opposed to a hard paper copy one. So let's take a look at these. These are divided based on the number of authors. For an article with one author, you provide the author's name and the year of publication. You provide the title of the book italicized the name of the electronic reader software, and then you provide that DOI number or that web address, whichever one you can find. Note again, no periods here. So this was an article written by J.H. Grant in 2009. It was titled In Search of the Normal in a Paranormal World. The, the software was Adobe Digital Editions, and if I had a DOI number, I would put that next. If not, I would look up the home page of the particular publisher of the book and put that. Two to seven authors, we list them all out in the same order they appeared on the original, but everything else is the same. Eight or more authors, we list the first six, we put three periods to represent all the rest, and we provide the last named author. Again, we want to follow the order of the original book. Everything else is the same. Okay, now let's look at a presentation that was done electronically, a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF file. Again, we have our template, author always comes first, followed by date. The title of the presentation comes next. The format of the presentation follows in brackets and then the web address. So let's look at this example. We have a PowerPoint slideshow that was created by B.L. Nelson on February 21st, 2011. We have the title, Increasing School Spirit Through Song, How Realistic is Television's Portrayal of Show Choirs. This is a PowerPoint slideshow, so that's its format, and here's where it was retrieved from. I wanted to show you one thing very quickly. Any word that follows a colon is capitalized, and that's why the word how is capitalized. Now let's look at a class lecture without presentation slides. I know this isn't an electronic source, but I didn't know where else to put it. So if you're sitting in a class, you're taking notes, and you end up using some of that information in a paper, here's how you would cite it on your references list. You would provide the author of the lecture, followed by its date. You would put the title of the lecture, Seven Ways to Eliminate Sanitary Problems from Restaurant Kitchens, yum. And finally, you would provide its location, the Hospitality, hospitality Department Test Kitchen at the University of Alaska Anchorage, Anchorage, Alaska. That's quite a mouthful, I realize, but you want to be specific about where the lecture took place. Okay, folks, that's it. That's a quick, maybe not so quick, overview of how you cite electronic sources. If you still have any questions about APA documentation or anything else, please feel free to come to the Writing Lab in room D120. Our librarians are also terrific in terms of helping you uh, find sources as well as document them. Finally, please remember that there is a list of workshops on the Writing Lab portal page. We have several more about APA documentation. Thank you so much for listening today, and I wish you good luck in all of your projects. Goodbye.